What's good, Ravens fans? Today, I want to talk about something that a lot of people aren't talking about. We're seeing videos about Lamar Jackson, how great he's playing, which he's playing great. We're seeing videos about the injuries that the Ravens have, which are plentiful. And I'm going to make videos about that too, because, you know, you guys like that stuff. But I also want to talk about something that we're not really talking about a lot. And that is the excellence of Eric DaCosta right now. We're about a quarter through the season and we're seeing a couple of things that I think we have to point out because all the best teams in the league currently have one thing in common. When we're talking about the Ravens, when we're talking about the 49ers, when we're talking about the Eagles, we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys, they have one thing in common, not excellent quarterback play, not, you know, a great, great head coach. What they have in common is their ability to draft and develop talent, especially first round talent. And this is something that's super important because if you can draft and develop first round talent, it's going to grow and compound and give you so many different things. It gives you one, great players. Like they all say, it's not about the X's and the O's, it's about the Jimmy's and the Joe's. Great players help you because they give you the one thing that you need in football. The second thing is it gives you capital. Not all your players will stay. Everyone knows that. Not all your great players will stay. However, when you take a player and he doesn't want to stay, you can trade him. Or if he leaves, you sometimes get compensation based on how things work out during the free agency period. All this together, added up over time, leads you to be an elite team year after year after year. The teams I gave you examples of have all used this strategy. Draft well, develop players, and win games. It's so, so simple. A one, two, three step process. Now, the Ravens, it's really plainly evident about the job that Eric DaCosta has done. Eric DaCosta, I believe, has not yet missed on any first round draft picks. Now, I want to talk about the players that the Ravens still have. I'm not going to talk about Hollywood Brown, who had a thousand yard season for the Ravens. But in my head, that's still a successful draft pick. He was very useful when he was here and was the best receiver on the team when he was here. Now, let's talk about the picks that currently are making such a large impact that I think it's almost unquestioned the level that Eric DaCosta is and how great he is as a general manager and how his impact is being felt throughout the entire team. First, let's talk about Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton, in my opinion, has been the best player on this defense this year. And I don't know if it's even close, really. Maybe Jadavion Clowney can say something about that. Roquan Smith, of course, can say something. However, Kyle Hamilton is doing something that the other players on the defense are not. He's playing so well that he's helping erase some of the injuries that we have. We have injured cornerbacks. We have injured safeties. But Kyle Hamilton is playing so well at all three levels of the defense that he's making up for it. And I would argue if we're talking about a Ravens defensive player of the year, it has to be Kyle Hamilton. We've seen that he was able to get sacks and put pressure on the quarterback. We've seen him make sideline to sideline plays on the second level with the linebackers. We've seen him in bad coverage making plays as well. Again, he is not going to be somebody who is flashy. Just the way he plays and for some reason, even though he moves faster than it looks, how it looks does matter. But he is someone that is making plays at every level of the defense and needs to be commended for that. And Eric DaCosta needs to be commended for taking a safety with the first pick of the first round where many players and many coaches were doubting that because usually safeties fall back because of the value in the league today. It's It's been amazing. And I, again, if he continues his production the way he is, he will definitely be the best player on the Baltimore Ravens defense until Marlon Humphrey comes back um, for sure. And unless, again, Roquan Smith just takes that next step and becomes all-time dominant because right now Kyle Hamilton is playing amazing. Next, we're going to talk about another draft pick of Eric DaCosta in the same year, Tyler Lindenbaum. Tyler Lindenbaum can already say he's a top five center in this league by the way he's playing. Can already say that right now. He's been injured this year for a little bit, but when it comes to a dominant Ravens run game, Tyler has a big part to do with that. Tyler, again, is the center. He is the brain with Lamar Jackson. They have to be one-on-one -on -one when they're doing their blocking schemes and making adjustments. And with Lamar Jackson's newfound power to make changes at the line of scrimmage, Tyler Lindenbaum's job got even harder this year. 
and he's doing a great job at it. The Ravens' run game is still powerful and it's still dangerous. Now, we're not dedicating, you know, 10 people to block for Lamar like we did with Greg Roman. However, with the six, seven, and sometimes eight men blocking schemes that we use, Tyler Lindenbaum is playing excellent. He can do it all. He's shown that he can stay up there and do power pass block when people bigger than him are trying to get to the quarterback. We already know how great he moves in space. We already know how great he does when he wants to get to the second level. He is just an excellent, excellent, excellent center. And I really do believe in the next two to three years that Tyler Lindenbaum can be the best center in football, especially after Jason Kelsey retires. Because again, in my opinion, Jason Kelsey is undeniably the best center in football. But Tyler Lindenbaum has what it takes. And it's real funny because he's actually has a similar body type to Jason Kelsey, a little undersized, but uh, you know, a bulldog and, and is vicious. And I'm like, super excited about that. And again, another aspect of the game where you can see that Eric DaCosta understands talent and fit. Talent and fit. Same thing that we saw this year at wide receiver when we drafted Zay Flowers, who has been the best offensive player on our team outside of Lamar Jackson. Now, injuries and a slow start for Mark Andrews, you know, have put him in second to me. Just overall, when you take these four games into account, he's come on strong now. That last game, he was the best. But when you take the all four games into account, it's been Zay Flowers. When you're able to combine skill and fit, it's something special. Zay Flowers, when we talk about fit, he's a perfect receiver for Lamar Jackson. Not only is he able to do the things downfield and make those hard catches, he's also able to do the yak part, the yards after catch part, which is important for Lamar Jackson offense. Why is that? Because if we're gonna run the ball so much, there's gonna be one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside. We know that the receivers that we've had in the past, maybe were able to catch the ball downfield, but when they got the ball, they could do nothing with it. In this game, the best receivers in this game are great at yak. Justin Jefferson may be the lowest when it comes to yak, but he's still a good receiver after the catch. Tyree Kill, awesome, awesome after the catch. These are the type of players that we want to build our team around. We want speed, we want skill, and we want talent, and Zay Flowers has all of that. And he went to a smaller college than some of the other receivers that we see in our league. He didn't go to an SEC powerhouse. But his ability to make plays, you know, after the catch, his ability to run routes, it, it's just A1 stuff. And again, being able to identify that, Eric DaCosta saw that, hey, this is what we really need. This is what makes a good receiver great. Make the draft pick. And now we're at a level that is just super impressive as an overall team because of these great draft picks. And guys, before I go, you know, we're focusing on number one round picks. However, if we take Eric DaCosta's entire tenure here and just name some of the draft picks that he has that have been successful throughout all of the rounds, it's actually kind of amazing. His, his hit rate is well above other teams. Let's talk about 2019, his first draft class. The two that jump out is Marquise Brown, and Justice Hill. Those are the two that we still have on the roster who are making impacts. You get two, you do good. He also drafted Ben Powers, who is making less of an impact in my opinion. But again, awesome, awesome, awesome draft class right there. Now his next draft class, 2020, Tasha Queen, J.K. Dobbins, Justin Matabike, Devin Duvernay, and Malik Harrison. That's four or five players making significant impacts on our team. Uh, Again, you just can't you can't overstate how great of a job he's doing. Now, 2021, in my opinion, was his weakest draft so far. But Rashad Bateman, again, OK. Adolphe Owe, potential and has never really jumped there. Ben Cleveland's been good for us. Brandon Stevens has been good for us. Players like that, you know, Tylen Wallace, you know, again, has been good. Not really making the impact, though, that we need. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the best draft class, arguably, of that year was the 2022 draft class. Kyle Hamilton, Tyrell Lindenbaum, David Ojabo, Travis Jones, you know, Jordan Stout, Isaiah Likely, Pepe Williams. All, all those players either are making a significant impact or still have that high potential. 
And then, of course, we don't know what this year's class is going to be other than Zay Flowers. But he's just done an excellent, excellent job. And I'm happy he's our our GM because he be playing for another team and be dominating us the way he's dominating the league. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. I'm trying to give you guys more consistent content. Please subscribe, help us out, watch the videos, like. And if you have a Ravens fan in your family, share the video, family or friends. We appreciate you. Thanks. Go Ravens.